Indeed, indeed. So if you were somebody who was betting that the NFL would reinstate Calvin Ridley, well, you got your bet right because Calvin Ridley was indeed reinstated. So that means the Falcons get the Jaguars fifth round pick this year. It's always good as many picks as you can get in those late rounds when you're dealing with someone like Terry Fontenot and Arthur Smith making the decisions and you have a success story like Tyler Algier. It's still a good look. They can also get a conditional 2024 pick. That would be a fourth rounder. And then, of course, depending on how things play out with Calvin Ridley, this 2023 season with the Jaguars, it could end up being a 2024 third rounder. If he signs an extension, it'll be a second rounder. Advantage Falcons all day, every day with that. I think it's going to work out and be a win-win for both sides. The Jags, Trevor Lawrence will have another weapon in Calvin Ridley. And we'll, with all of the assets that the Falcons were able to pile up, right? So Calvin Ridley is back. And here's the question I I would have for those of us who kind of look at things like Jarvis, like you and I do. We don't really Mm -hmm. just look at it from a sports perspective and a numbers perspective, because when we meet a player or we cover a player, we may learn more about how that person operates. And I can remember him being the guy who was so humbled when he was selected as captain. I remember asking him how he felt about being a captain. You asked him about that as well. And he was very humble, very appreciative about the opportunity and took it very, very seriously. So that's the guy. And that guy who whose face lit up when you talked about him catching balls out of jugs for hours, that's the guy that I'm going to root for. The guy who made the very, very poor decision that got him booted out of the league for a year, hopefully that guy's gone. Hopefully, as I believe this is his statement, uh, or, or rather the statement from the Jaguars, they're saying, hey, today's reinstatement by the NFL brings an end to a challenging chapter of his professional career. That's the statement from Calvin, rather, that the Jaguars released. Yeah. He says, I've always owned my mistakes, and this is no different. I look forward to showing my new coaches and team exactly who I am. So you know what, Jarvis? I'm going to take him at his word, and I'm going to definitely be looking out and rooting for Calvin Ridley. Me too. When you think about, like like you said, being clo- covering Cal like this and, you know, yeah. being so close when he got, got drafted in. And I remember that day, T, yeah. vividly when, right. when, like, right before they got ready to go to London. Mm. And I asked them, I was I asked them a question as far as what, um, something that Arthur Smith had said. And yes. you just, I just saw the look on his face and it was just like, something wasn't right. Like, you know, how you look at somebody and you're like, ah. See, yeah, ain't there it today. Just, yeah, it just yeah. wasn't. It just wasn't right. And then maybe a day later, less than twenty four hours later, they were announcing that he wasn't going to uh, traveling with the team that the next couple of days. And I'm just like, man, what is going on? So, and of course, as we you know talking to different folks within the organization mm-hmm. and yes. our folks outside of the organization mm-hmm. and close to the situation, it was like, hey, mm-hmm. this is what's going down. And, and when yeah. you find those things out, it's just like, man. It's just a one thing after another. Then you mm-hmm. hear about the gambling piece, and it was yes. just like a yes. it was like a snowball effect. And mm-hmm. and and I think that with all that being said, I really, really am really rooting for this guy. Not necessarily yeah. for the whole assets piece. That's a whole other thing. But I think right. just from as a as a man, as a person, as a father, I, I think that I'm rooting for Cal to go, get back on get back on that get back on that um on that on, on, on that ride that we call life. And say, hey, right. man, I'm going to continue and do my thing and I'm going to get paid and get and get another contract so I can be able to make a living to be able to take care of my family. So that's kind of where I am with, with Cal. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I really hope that everything works out for him down there. And he's in down he, back at the crib here in Florida. So, you know, hey, you know, what can what can go wrong? I think I yeah. think I think this is a perfect place for Cal. And I think that mm-hmm. Terry Fano and Arthur Smith worked out a really solid deal um, yes. in order to you know be able to get some compensation for a very talented player. And I think that's a great point, too, because Arthur Smith in particular, I can remember him being very respectfully protective of Calvin Ridley in that situation. That could have gone sideways with a whole lot of coaches and a whole lot of organizations. So give Arthur Smith, Terry Fontenot, Arthur Blank and company a whole lot of credit for trying their best to protect this guy, knowing what was really going on both yeah. mentally and then with the mistake that he made in that, in that gambling space and putting him in a space where they could have sent him out to NFL Siberia if they felt like, Hey man, Indeed. we'll send you to the Texans, but right. they sent him to a quality squad that's in contention and will be in contention for a number of years to come. I thought that was a solid look as well. And that to me, Falcons fans, you should be rooting for Calvin Ridley because there's something in him that Arthur Smith said, hey, while you probably won't fit here anymore, that day has probably 
come and gone. There's still quality left in you as a person and as a player. So we're going to set you up for success. So I think that's a great thing as well. And I think that the Falcons will handle Calvin, uh, excuse me, Caleb McGarry that same way. I think that they made a very valid point last year when they said, no, we're not picking up your fifth year option. We haven't seen any reason to do so. We'll make you step up to the plate and then we're going to sit down at the table and decide. So whether that is going to be an exclusive tag that we might hear about today, a non-exclusive tag or whatever the case may be by four o'clock, we're going to know something one way or the other. We already know about Lorenzo Carter. We know that he's coming back for a couple of years and we'll talk about that in a second, but for Caleb McGarry, this one will be intriguing because not only is it a question of whether they'll put a tag on Caleb McGarry, but Jarvis, if so, or if you think so, what kind of tag might that be? Wow. Um, for me, I, I really feel like I feel like the Falcons want to resign him in some capacity. Yes. Well, reason, Agreed. reason why I put that caveat on it is because I don't think yeah. they want to pay him $18 million a year or Agreed. 17 You know what I mean? So Because yes. at the end, end of the day, like, that's why these negotiations get a little weird at, from time to time because – like we only got one year of solid play or excellent mm-hmm. play from from a run blocking standpoint, right? You yeah. know, we also people like want to tend to forget about, you know, the passing game and, and the type of scheme that Arthur Smith runs. Like he didn't put his offensive lineman in bad bad situations this exactly. year exactly because he was able to run the football. You know, mm-hmm. we, now we go backtrack when when Matt Ryan was here when they were throwing the ball a lot more than what they were doing when Marcus Mariota was on the center, Caleb McGarry got exposed. And that has been his knock ever since mm-hmm. he came into the league. Yes. Before he even stepped foot in the league and got drafted, yes. people said he has issues with edge rushes or speed rushes. He has issues with the speed rushes. And when that continues to remain the same every year, I get concerned. That's mm-hmm. a red flag for me. <laughs> and, yeah. and, then, and then when you yeah. get yourself to a space where, hey, you, you elevate your run blocking, you know, to a to a whole nother level and being one of the better run blocking uh right tackles in the league. Right. But you still struggle with you know those speed rushes T, that's just something that I have to I can't I can't I can't leave that I I don't know I can't leave that behind in negotiations when when it comes to whether or not you want to be a, a top ten guy or and a I top got a ten fifteen a top that, fifteen paid guy. Yeah. Right. And before you go on, I wanna put a pause in it because I have a question for you in your opinion Jarvis that's a great point we're now moving into year five and like Mm -hmm. you said that means we're now in year six or seven for that same knock that same knock it's like "Ah, I don't want to hear it again so Jarvis is this something in your opinion with um you being a guy who you know obviously on the defensive side but you were in the trenches where you see that there can ever be a enough of a sizable bump in that space to 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 the point where the Falcons should really consider him to be a prime O lineman, or is that something where they're just like, okay, that's just going to be a liability of his, and we'll just continue to build around him in that space because he's good enough against the run. That's a, that's a really good question um, because here here's the thing: like you have to weigh it out when mm-hmm. okay, like I'm paying for a really good run blocking yes. right tackle, but right. I'm going when it's time to throw the football in today's game. That's going to mm-hmm. be often, <laughs> more than yeah. likely. If, and if you don't get your defensive uh, situation uh, uh, figured out, you're going to be in that situation a lot more this year as well with a, a, a second-year guy who's only started four games as right. of right now, as of today. True. So being the way this, this roster is currently constructed right now, as of today, I can't, make, I can't take that risk and, 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 and go out there and, 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 and make him a top-10 uh right, right tackle. I can't do that. Yeah, and if it's a matter of hey, I let him test the free uh, the free agent market, see what's out there, see what type of offers he's getting, and mm-hmm. and if he comes back and gets that reality check, like hey man, uh, well this team is only offering me this. Well, we'll offer you a little bit more. We'll hey, hey let's offer you twelve million dollars a year. You know, I'll be cool mm-hmm. with that. I, I'm calm with that. Yeah. That's a nice, yeah. respectable contract. Right. And that's a contract which, which is a lot more than what you were going to get when they decide not to pick up your fifth-year option. Yes. So, I mean, I hate to be harsh like that, but that's mm-hmm. at the end of the day, when it comes to negotiations mm-hmm. and, and, and long-term investment, like, right. we have to put the facts out on the table to you. <laughs> yep. No, I appreciate that. That's why I was asking you for your insight on that because it appears to me like that would put – 
the Falcons in sort of the driver's seat or the catbird seat because no offense, but that's kind of like 50%, 30%, 40% of your job. I'll say maybe even 30, 40% because we do know that the Falcons are are run dominant. Right. But still, that means about 40% of your job, your average at best. So yeah, I do still think that's also one of those situations where the Falcons are indeed in the driver's seat in that situation. And I do think there are still some viable O-linemen, whether you wanted to go to the draft or whether you want to go to free agency, who could be, dare we say it from a football perspective, a two-way O-lineman, right? Right. Now, going back to the defensive side of the ball, which Jarvis and I love to go to on this show. So did you really think we were going to not talk defense and talk low Carter reason being too Jarvis remember a couple of weeks ago we had this conversation about some of those prove it year players and who were the ones that we wanted to kind of we we prioritized and we kind of were hoping that Rashawn Evans would be that one that they come out of the gates and say woohoo we'd like to keep you but low Carter is the one he actually has that two-year contract now so are the Falcons pretty set when you look across that linebacker core or do you think They need to obviously continue focusing on maybe re-signing Rashawn and maybe getting a little more help at linebacker. Oh, wow. I mean, for for me, though, I kind of – I mean, I know his position is an outside linebacker, but Mm -hmm. I look at Lil Carter as a guy – let's just use him as an edge rusher. And and I think that Mm. from an edge rushing standpoint, like I feel like he's a guy that can be a a solid rotational guy for you. Mm -hmm. Now, we haven't got the details just yet on what his contract is going to be. I know it's just two years, but Mm -hmm. just from a numerical standpoint, I think that I'm interested to see what that is because, you know, if if you're talking about a guy who wasn't necessarily a a guy who would remain healthy, he was able to Mm -hmm. play 17 games for you, got four sacks, which is – not great, but right. it is viable. It's serviceable. It's serviceable. Because right. didn't that you get you I mean? all the almost all the way to what they had the year before as an entire team? <laughs> right. So so yeah, those are some of the things that you know I, I feel like one of the, some of the reasons why I felt like it was good for the Falcons to bring on Low Carter back, and I think they want to continue to upgrade at that edge rusher spot because yeah. we know D'Angelo Malone probably might be standing up on first and second down. And third down, he's going to come in and put his hand in dirt or get in the two-point stands and, and rush the pass on third and long. So I think there's going to be a lot of versatility, a lot of moving parts as far as what their rotation looks like. And I will hope that Lowe is not necessarily that starter guy, but a guy that can come in on third down and rush and don't have to worry about anything else. And I think that he, he was pretty okay at that last year. So uh, I think I uh, shout out to the Falcons for bringing it back filling out their roster because that's what they need to do. A lot of people don't understand. Like, they got a lot of spots to fill on their roster, and they started off with low card. And, I, and, and he, to be honest with you, I, I, I congratulate them for it, for doing it. Yeah, I, I can appreciate that as well, making moves. And also, just to me, giving the fan base confidence that they are moving forward and that every day is a day of action for the Falcons. So we'll keep you posted. I know you guys saw me kind of look down at my phone. You saw Jarvis kind of looking down because we want to make sure that if there's any breaking news that you guys know about it, especially as we approach that deadline. But let's just be honest, Jarvis. The whole world, the whole world, the whole of NFL kingdom it's really Lamar Jackson Day. It's really happy Lamar Jackson Day because that's yes. what the world is looking at. And that's what Locked On Sports is checking out as well. So if you want to know about the major stories, uh, Aaron Rodgers is another one that everyone's looking at. Check out Locked On Sports today because they've got that national news about all of these moving parts on this franchise tag deadline day. So don't forget, wherever you Download your podcast. You definitely want to download Locked On Sports today there. Of course, after you download ATL Day Ones. And don't forget to check them out on YouTube, just like you check us out. And I know you love For the Culture. We're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. But don't forget, they have their version, and it's called Take of the Day. So Locked On Sports today, ATL Day Ones, sounds like a winner to me.